All right, welcome to Money Never Sleeps. This is a show where we talk about anything and everything that impacts the flow of money from around the corner to around the world. And I want to thank you again for joining us and listening to my rants on certain topics. Today, I want to speak about Ripple, about Tesla stock tokens, about Coinbase, Bitcoin, and other cryptocurrencies, and, ex- and what's going on with Kraken and Binance and, and regulation. The, the bottom line here is that Tesla, they, as, as everyone knows, they went out and they acquired $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin and it accrued in value, was sitting on their, their, their books, so on and so forth. They're allowing for people to utilize Bitcoin to buy uh, Tesla cars, but that's not the whole story now. Now, Tesla, they're going to have Tesla stock tokens. Well, they're not going to have them. They have them as of today. As of today, on Binance, you can actually buy them, but not if you're in the U.S., Turkey, or mainland China. Okay, there are restrictions there, but what it's doing and what what Elon Musk is essentially doing, he's basically allowing investors to buy fractional shares of his stock without actually having to split the stock up. He's allowing you to do this, which is going head to head with the Robin Hoods in the world and other brokerage firms that are allow- allowing this right now. So it's going to be very interesting. A grant that is just for Tesla itself. Uh, the regulation is a little spotty on that. And the reason I, you know, this is evident is because it's not allowed in the U.S. You know, it's not allowed in the United States. So you can't do that here. Uh, although how they have it set up is that Tesla stock tokens, they will settle in Binance USD. That's a stable token and basically is based on the the, the U.S. dollar. So it becomes somewhat interesting. Uh, And I think it's going to set yet another precedent for for things to come and the things that you're going to see coming down the pike. And there, 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 there are going to be a lot of changes happening in the crypto space. And it's beyond Bitcoin. Bitcoin is one part of the story. There's a bigger story going on here. And you, you have the likes of, um, uh, you have other other groups that have been basically dabbling in crypto for some time and Bitcoin for some time. Okay. And now what Tesla is doing, they're ramping it up. All right. Uh, Coinbase uh, going public or has gone public already. Uh, I believe the symbol is going to be coin. Uh, don't know if it's trading today. I'm, I'm not, not 100% sure on that. But it may be, uh, but I think sometime this week it's it's happening. Um, the the reality is, people think that great Coinbase is a great buy. It's fantastic, you know. And it, the the reality is, is that Coinbase they are a custodian. They're 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 a broke. They're a uh, an exchange. They're a custodian for these coins, right? So if you have whatever, if you have Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, they allow they they show the market on it. They put it out there, but they actually allow, they hold on to it as a custodian. Now with Goldman Sachs and what they announced just recently that they're getting in, they're getting in the game. They're getting in the game. They're going to, they're looking to go and take a chunk of this because they know there's big money in it. This is the future. They're not going to sit on the sidelines and wait while other people play in their sandbox. They're not going to let that happen. They're slow moving, but when they move, they hit, they hit hard. And I think that's going to give Coinbase uh, a lot of competition. You're going to have other brokerage firms that are going to be doing this as well. Again, additional competition. I, I don't think it's going to be an easy road for them. I don't think they're going to go and just grab everything and and grab market share and just go from there. Uh, there are a lot of things, a lot of moving parts with it. I think Coinbase is going to take some time, and that they're going to need to adjust their business model to actually you know, be competitive with the other uh, brokerage firms that are getting into the game. When you're, you're playing in a, in a field, in a box, and you basically haven't been challenged too much before, but now you're going to be challenged on a bigger scale. And more importantly, you have to report all this stuff. You just can't go and do things quietly. Now you have to report it. You're a publicly traded company. You have to report it. So let's see what happens there. Okay, and uh, with with Binance, 
in case you don't know, you know, Binance is an exchange that's based in Malta. And the reason it's based in Malta is because the regulation is kind of light over there. And they, they, they have a money uh, transfer license and everything that goes on there. They're trying to do the right thing. They're trying to make things happen. The issue with it is that you have, you know, other, you know, regulatory bo bodies in other countries that could easily come in and create a lot of uh, problems for them. So they're, they're doing it the way they need to. Uh, and again, you know, for them to go make a deal with Tesla, you know, and or for fractional shares via a, a tokenization is going to be a different animal. And you may see more and more companies do this, you know, puts them in control, more control of their of, of what they're doing now, how it's working out and how the the stock is being exchanged. I don't know the particulars with that. I'm sure that's going to come to light shortly. Uh, it can't just be the company selling treasury stock. I don't think that that is going to be the case. So we're going to see how that's going to work out. All right. Um, Bitcoin, you know, I've said this time and time again, you know, you have you know, people think that Bitcoin is going to replace currency and is not get it in your heads. It's not going to replace the U.S. dollar, euro or any other currency that's out there, any other fiat currency. But what Bitcoin does, they are a store of value. It's like owning gold or or anything of value that accrues in value over time. And that's what you have in your hands. This is why you're not going to see people buying Bitcoin to go buy milk or bread or this or that. They're not going to do it. You may have people that own Bitcoin that had it at, at 20 bucks or 50 bucks, 100 bucks. Maybe they're going to go buy a Tesla. Maybe they're going to go buy something because, you know, they made their money. They're looking to cash out. OK, but when you're talking about people going in there and physically buying it, you know, it's going to be problematic. Because the settlement time takes too long. Even if you have a custodian doing it, okay, you know, typically, you know, it takes time to do that. And the thing is, too, is that if you own something and let's say you buy it at 55 and all, and you go to buy something and all of a sudden the thing is at 65,000 and you, 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 your, your uh, transaction didn't settle yet, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to just let it go or you're going to try to cancel it. So, you know, and, and can you cancel it? Probably not. You know, so it's, it's the same things on the reverse. If you if you go and you pay for something, say it's fifty five, then it goes down to forty five. You know, what can the uh, the uh, the buyer do, or actually the seller do at that point? So there are a lot of things uh, that make me look at it uh, as it should be looked at as a store of value. You know, it's not a stock; it's something that'll accrue in value over time. I believe. And this is why you're going to see more people willing, willing to go and accept cryptocurrency as a form of payment because they're not cashing out on it. They can go hold it and let it accrue in value and hopefully it brings more to the table for them. And that's what you're looking at. OK, uh, Kraken uh, was it uh, Jesse Powell? He's the CEO of Kraken. He said and, and I agree with this. He said that they're going to be uh, crackdowns on the cryptocurrency space. I thought this for a long time, and I think it's coming. I think regulation is going to come. It's going to change things somewhat. And all the <clears throat> the cryptocurrencies that are out there that have no utility, that are not doing anything, that are not being used for a thing, they're going to fall by the wayside. You have to look at that. You have to look at what the the uh, let me just fix my thing here. Uh, you have to look at what the value is is there. What are they being used for? What is this crypto being used for? Is it being used for something? Is it not being used for something? Is this something that people are buying, you know, for for nothing? Okay, you have to look at what the value, what the utility is with these cryptos. Uh, Ripple. I want to touch on Ripple been speaking about that and i said this that ripple itself the company does some amazing things does some amazing things they you know when they issued their their crypto and this is the only thing that really threw me off is that i don't think it was ever clear to people that xrp was not representing the stock uh, the company itself okay that's the only issue that i see there but again you know, ever since then, I mean, the coin's been trading. It's been trading like crazy. I mean, it just, this is what it does. It goes up, it goes down, it goes sideways. It's like a, a crazy penny stock that's bouncing up and down. 
you know, but I don't see too many people complaining about it. So if they're not complaining about it and they understand what's happening, the people that originally got in are out and they cashed out. So where's the complaint? Where's the complaint? You know, Ripple, I think that they're going to continue to win these battles because granted what happened way, way, way back when and how things began, there were no regulations in place. You can't go and, and make a regulation up, uh, you know, two years later and come back and, and, and revert it. It's like saying that, hey, you just you you just uh, sold a pound of weed today. And you're going to jail today, and but the law changes in a year, and are you going to reverse that that ruling, that 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 sentence? And that has not happened. Same thing with prohibition and what has happened there. So you know these are things that that uh, people should should realize. You can't go and take a law and and put it into effect and go back in time. You don't have a time machine. You can't do it. If something transpired, it transpired. You know, if it was legal or not legal, whatever the case may be, you can. You can fight the point, but I, I don't think that they did anything that was illegal. I, I don't think that they did anything that warranted MoneyGram to pull out. I think that was stupid of them to do that. Uh, maybe they pulled out temporarily, but you know, Ripple. They, as far as uh, dealing with the the uh, with making money transfers better, quicker, cheaper, they 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 have it. They have it. Okay, so I, again, I think that you know the the company itself is going to be strong. I think that you know that company should probably go public at some point, maybe. But then they have to reveal everything, and maybe that's not a good thing either. Who knows? Who knows? You know, but I think that they're going to win these battles. You know, it's going to take some time, but they will have victories. They'll have a couple of losses, but at the end of the day, they'll get back their stride. And again, does it impact XRP itself? No. Understand it doesn't. What Ripple does has nothing to do with XRP. That's it. End of story. Okay, so now we, we went over Tesla stock tokens, Ripple, Coinbase, Bitcoin, and crypto. You know, when you look again, you're looking at crypto, look for the utility. If you have a if you have a utility there, then you're you're in, in the wind column. Okay. And uh, that's about it for this edition of Money Never Sleeps. Okay. Um you know, I'm going to come back to, and I think I'm going to be speaking more and more about this. I didn't want to, but it's like I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I have to, because there are a lot of things going on. Is dynamically changing. This thing with Tesla and the stock tokens is, is new, and you're going to see more of this. And this is where it gets interesting. Look, you have Jim Cramer, CNBC. He's, he's, he's putting it out there. You know, pay me in Bitcoin. You know, I mean, joking or not, the point is, is that, Everyone is on board. They understand, not everyone, but a lot of people on board, they understand the dynamics of what Bitcoin represents. Okay. And the, the line has been drawn. The future is in front of us. The digital future is there. Okay. Just keep watching it. And don't just watch. You have to get involved in the activity. Again, you know, you, you, you have, I guarantee you have cryptos that are out there that you haven't heard about, that haven't been widely publicized, that are sitting there and they, they have a utility and all of a sudden, boom, they're going to spring up on you. Okay. But you got to make sure, again, they have the utility, but I'm telling you, they're there and they're going to be coming out. So keep an eye out for them. All right. On that note, I am done for this episode of Money Never Sleeps. Thank you for tuning in and I'll be back with you with another segment uh, later on this week. Take care.